I really like this, the, the characters. You didn't, you don't know in the beginning where you're going to be in the end, of course. Yeah. And this this image we have from from each other in a relationship is really the question in this in this, I guess. Um, was something that fascinated you as well? I wasn't the. Um, I, I I think I was t taken with the way that she chose to dramatize it. Yeah. You know that she took. Um, something that was very intimate and projected it against the, you know, um, 24 hour cable news cycle and scrutinized, you know, a, a marriage under this sort of, you know, 10,000 watt glare of we have to know, we have to know what happened, we have to know what was going, what, what was their marriage like? And, and n no marriage can, could stand that kind of scrutiny. And some very, you know, interesting diabolical things come out of that. Um, you broke this Gillian, the who, who wrote the original Gillian. Yeah. Gillian. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was working with her. How and who decided uh, on on change on changes uh, between the book and the movie? Um, well, I mean, who decides? I think we both decide. I mean. She was so well versed in everything that those characters are thinking at any given moment and was so um, um, wonderfully um, limber in being able to take something that normally, so, you know, or, or appeared in the novel, appeared on page 400 and moving that into the first scene. You know, she could take things because we had long conversations about. We don't, as a as a as an audience member in a film, don't get to hear the thoughts of both characters. Um, we get to via the the diaries hear Amy's thoughts. So we have the she said, but the he said part of it is really played out through behavior and what you can dramatize. And and I think a lot of people are um, a lot of people a lot of very good sane people would have been daunted by that and. And uh, and Gillian was she rolled up both sleeves and jumped right in and and she took to it. I mean, she's a very big movie fan. You know, she's seen probably more movies than I have, and she's certainly seen more recent movies than I have. But she was so good about um, you know t when you would say to her, "This is a great notion." Whose face does it play on? Yeah. Who's gonna Who's gonna and then she would go, oh, and she would create moments. You know, screenwriting is is not only just crafting the perfect comeback, but it's also allowing for an actor to have a moment where they say everything by not doing anything with their face. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that, when you can kind of give them these moments to to be human in their response to things, um, you know, you get good actors, you're going to be very happy. Speaking of the actors, um, how did you decide on making Rosamund uh, your, your amazing Amy? Rosamund was, was, um, was somebody that I had seen, I had seen her work before and enjoyed it and, and thought she was, obviously she's luminous and, and stunning and, and poised and she has all of that stuff, you know, th that Amy has to have in Amy's projection of herself. Um, but um, I met her, you know, I, I, I normally sort of hold out something about the character that I feel the actor has to have. They have to have some kind of kindred um, connection to it. And, and in this case, when I met Rosman, it was very evident that she was an only child. <laughs> and that was that was sort of the key to Amy. I mean, Amy is an orchid. She's a hothouse flower, and and I needed that. I needed somebody who was not socialized with other bratty sisters and brothers. She had to kind of you know be her own. She had to be her own lonely person who becomes her own creation. And how much did you work on her during the shooting? I mean, she had to be really open to you and uh, trustful to you doing all this. Yeah, I mean, you don't do anything to an actor. You know, you, you, you do things with them or you allow for them. You know, I mean, 
part, part of what you're trying to create is an environment where they can take risks and fail and know that that's not going to end up in outtakes on HBO. Um, you know, they want, they, you know, they have to fall face first down a hill. You know, that, that, that's what, to me, the best performances come from people who are willing to do anything. And I think the audience feels that. And especially in a situation like this, there's, you know, Ben has the, you know, thankless task of being the, being the punchline to most of the, most of the jokes in the movie. And you, you can't do that. You can't do that without someone's permission. They have to, you know, this is a guy who steps on a rake and gets hit in the forehead and steps on a shovel and gets hit in the forehead and steps on a hoe and gets hit in the forehead. It's, it's, it's tough. Nick Dunn's tough. That's a tough part to play. You've got to be, and, and to have the wit to understand them and portray the, um, the, you know, impossibility of, of being able to get in front of that train. You know, he's a guy who's judged in the media and he has no say in it. And luckily he was a guy who knows what that's like. Much better. Okay. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.